Found you. <laughs> What's up, guys? Uh, so it's been a while, and I wanted to give everybody an update. So here we are today. We're gonna go visit Clint. No. No more of that. We are not doing that intro anymore. I made that thing. I hate the intro. No more of that. We're never playing that again. So, I know a lot of people have asked where we've been, and um, that's one of the main reasons why we're making this today, but also Clint reached out to me and asked to uh, come over and film with him. You know, just to let everybody know that the shop is running still, uh, so if you want to go get tattooed or see any of the boys, they're all at Sparrow's. Um, Danny left for a different shop, but really everybody else is there. Cody's around, Zach's around, and um, really Clint has been out of commission, which is one of the things we're going to talk about today. I know a lot of you have been asking, but I wanted to address this first in the video and just let you know that I hadn't forgot about you. We're still making content, and I'm still filming. I just don't always feel like it's necessary to put out all of the information about what's going on with Clint. It's a really weird line for me where he's a friend, but at the same time I'm shooting Needle Boys. We appreciate you guys for checking us out and watching us all the time. And for everybody that's helped with uh, Clint's cancer battle or has just liked and shared and left a good comment on one of our previous videos. So on September 2nd, Clint had called all of us over to his house for some news. Uh, his battle with cancer had taken a major turning point. Really throughout the summer from, from like the end of May into June he was getting better and better and he was actually starting to get mobile again, he was starting to tattoo again, which I'm sure if you keep up with him or any of our stuff on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you would have seen that. I did film it, I've never released it, um, so here's that. I'm going to head over to Clint's, you watch the clip and you can be there with us during the meeting. That the regiment we were on was working and uh, they built a bit of resistance or something, but I gotta get a biopsy done on my lungs because they're finding all kinds of polyps and tumors now and there. So I wanted you guys to hear from me before anything else. So we're gonna we're gonna sit down at the shop and make a game plan because uh, with the way it's going right now, like. I'm going to have to dedicate every waking moment into figuring out just what the fuck I can do. And I asked him straight up. I asked him, I'm like, you know, how long do I got? <laughs> when he walked in the door, I could tell something was completely different with the guy. It wasn't the same doctor that I haven't seen. And I could tell that he didn't want to tell me what he told me, what he did. Everything's going to rock and roll as it is, as far as the shop goes. But I don't think I'll be there anymore. The reason why I've been in pain since Hawaii hasn't been... It's, we thought it was colitis and we thought it was hemorrhoids, but it's actually the tumor thickening again. Uh, so... We're just going to look at everything. So the biopsy is the plan so far? So far. Yeah, they've got another chemo that they're looking at, which is warm. Thinking. <clears throat> I don't know, man. What have you been up to? <laughs> A lot of go karting, some paintball, roller coasters, yeah. roller coasters every weekend. Yeah, I've been trying to get you know a little bit more active and get my spur lunking going. And just sitting there fucking dying. I have cancer in my lungs. 
liver, lymph nodes, colon, and kidneys. <laughs> like, like Deadpool. Came out of nowhere, man. Came out of left field. Thought everything was going solid, you know. Thought the treatment was going well. But, somehow it just, like I said, it had a trap door or something that just shot out. I guess the new regimen right now is to do radiation on the tumor in my colon to try to ease the pain so that way I can start walking again. Because at the moment I really can't walk that well. I mean, I might be able to shuffle to the, you know, the, the toilet, but that's that's about the extent of it. If the house caught on fire, I'd be fucked. <laughs> so you're just here. You always in bed now? Always. And usually always on this side because I guess wherever the tumor placement is, like this is the e it it's I guess eased. It's laying flat. And if I lay the other way, it feels like like it's hanging or it's like gravity's pulling on it or something. It's just pain in the ass. It hurts. So now I got like these bed, you know, bed sores on my right side, and like my hip and everything hurt, and it's just no fun. And you're at the hospital or the doctor what every week, multiple times a week now? Mm, yeah, usually. Like I mean, I see. Uh, I probably see about seven or eight different doctors, like an oncologist and a urologist and a pain specialist and a. Um, uh, like my uh, one of my surgeons, you know, uh, the, the people at the chemo clinic, and you know, I mean, this is just one after another, after another, after another. I do chemo about every ten days. I think we start the radiation next week, and that's going to be like, you know, they do like I think twenty minutes, ten or fifteen minutes of it every day for like five days and then they rest and then I guess it's like they just concentrated x-rays they just shoot into my ass <laughs> my pain specialist put me on like like uh, 60 milligrams of morphine and he told me that I had to buy an, an, like an F like a, one of the Ephraim pins or something like that in that case I, yeah in case I stopped breathing in the middle of the night like that's how strong that shit is and uh I'm still in pain. Like, I'm still just, like, in excruciating fucking pain. You know? Uh, and the, all my doctors are like, you're taking so much fucking drugs. Like, I take hydrocodones and the fucking Dilaudid and all this shit to try to ease this fucking pain that, you know, I'm damaging a lot of shit. And they're like, so we need to go in there and fucking hit it with radiation and try to shrink that fucking tumor and, and help you out. You know, and then the the chemo, it's going to hopefully go in there and start killing the cells off. You know, the, the radiation is supposed to shrink it and ease up on it. Because right now it's just basically like ripping through the fucking, the, the wall and it's just, it's just growing. So all my colon and my bladder and everything is just getting pushed around and like, it's hard for me to piss. I mean, it's hard for me to fucking just do anything. You know, everything was actually going good for me, you know, I met a good girl and I was starting a good relationship and, you know, we were, you know, planning on going on all these cool ass trips and, you know, just enjoying life and doing these things and, and just out of nowhere, just, it started with, with a little pain, you know, thinking it was like a hemorrhoid or something like that and I was like, all right, it'll go away. And it just got worse and worse and worse and worse and, you know, this is technically the third oncologist that I've seen and, you know, so that means it's the third opinion that I've gotten, you know, from a doctor. And one thing that's been said multiple times from each doctor is that I need to go ahead and have a living will and, a, you know, resuscitation paperwork in, in in hand because it's that serious you know and if I'm to kick the bucket then what's to happen to sparrows 
you know, what's going to happen to the, the 10, 11 years of hard work that I put into that place where the, you know, the, the name that I've tried to make for myself, you know, like, you know, it would suck to leave the planet and be unsure of the future of the shop, so I made some changes to it and made it to where, you know, I feel comfortable with the ch changes that were made. You know, cancer really shows you who's got your back or who's in your corner or who in your life really, really cared for you. You know, you know, like, who you really had an impact on and who you didn't. You know, I mean, unfortunately, going through this, I mean, it's shown me just, just that my life was riddled with selfish people. You know, people that knew that I would put them before me and use that to their advantage. And hey, you know what? I'm okay with it, you know, because if it made their life better in some kind of way, then so be it. I mean, they could have gone, gone, you know, they could have gone about it a different way, but, you know, say la vie. You start thinking about, you know, what people are going to say about you when, you know, you're gone. You know, I wonder what people are going to say about me. I wonder how many people are going to be fucking secretly happy or, you know, how many people are going to be, you know, actually really depressed and sad about it or, you know, or if, or if it just goes unnoticed, you know? I don't know, I'm scared. I'm not gonna lie. What are you scared? scared? I'm not scared of the actual, you know, dying. What are you scared about? I'm scared about what, what kind of impression did I really make on the world, you know? What is, what is it really that's gonna be, you know, remembered of me? Do you think about that because reality TV or the shop or the community that your career is in? Like, is there a specific reason? Because, I mean, like, most people are just afraid to die. Afraid to die young. They, the impression never enters their mind, like the impression they leave behind. I think most people... No, you know what it is? It's, it's just... You know, I want people to know that I didn't waste my life and that I didn't I didn't take the easy way out by just being a prick or an asshole or just, you know, fucking people over, you know, like, I tried to be a good fucking person in this world and I tried to do the best that I can with what I was dealt and, and you know, I never was greedy and I always, you know, tried to help people, you know, like, giving Russell a career or, you know, the guys at the shop a chance, you know, and, you know, that that's the scary part, like, what is, what is it that's going to be said about me, you know, like, because, I mean, it's, you know, like the shit with Jeremy, you know, like, you know, Jeremy learning from me and things like that, now we don't talk or anything like that, I mean, you know, that sucks, you know, and I don't want to leave the planet and know that that's what most people are going to think about me as, you know, or just, I don't know. With each passing day, I have to come closer and closer to the realization that I'm going to have to make peace with a lot of things that, you know, I'll never really make peace with. I don't think the universe wastes anything. I don't think it's just, you know, done. Like, I think there's more. I think there's more. You know, I think something else will happen. I don't know what. But. Are the doctors talking... <clears throat> are they talking like... Different courses of action now? Or are they talking like... Frames of time? I think it's both... You know, I think we're taking a different course from what we've been doing, which is just doing chemo. You know, and f for whatever reason, Dr. Dewar did not want me doing radiation. 
well, now that I've seen this other doctor, she's like, I think radiation is the first thing we need to do because hopefully it'll reduce the tumor and reduce the pain. We need to get me off all these goddamn drugs. That that's could kill me right there is just being on all these drugs, you know? Like, I could fall asleep and not wake up, you know? So, we need to reduce the tumor, and then once that starts, you know, really kicking in, I think we're going to do radiation next week, and then the following week we go ahead and start the chemo. And I'm going to be doing a different regiment than what the Dr. Dewar was doing. And she's going to do six rounds of it. And then mix in, I think, the radiation and, and see, you know, if we can't get me back to walking and, and being, you know, active again. Sucks, bro. I mean, chemo is just such a god-awful fucking thing, man. It just, my mouth hurts so much, dude. Why does your mouth hurt? Chemo just makes your mouth, you get mouth sores. Like, chemo just fucks your mouth up. Like, the chemo that I was on last time made me have neuropathy, and then, like, everything I touched that was cold or anything like that would burn. And now this other chemo I'm on just makes me sporadically throw up all over the fucking place. Jesus fucking yeah. Christ, that sounds fucking awful. Oh, it's Honestly, so that fucking bad. fucking awful. And it's not like food that I throw up. I'm just throwing up the chemo, and it's like burns, and it's bile, and it's just, ugh. The greatest scenario would be that the radiation, it really works. Shrinks the tumor really good. Chemo, go in there, and that really reduces it to where they feel they can go in there and do the surgery and remove the, whatever they see. And then, you know, either A, do another round or two of chemo, or just, you know, leave it at that and see what happens. You know, that's the best case scenario. You know, and and also reducing the other cancers in my lungs and my liver and things like that nature. Because now it's not just my colon, you know. Like, yeah. my colon is the one that's giving me the pain, but, you know, hopefully the chemo just, you know, kills off the cancer cells that are being found throughout my body. I know I want to go into it bravely. You know, I want to go into my death, you know, bravely that's just a good way to put it you know like you only get to have it once so i don't want to i don't want to be scared of it i don't want to you know have a painful one or you know one that i'm just knocked out or, i don't know i just i want to be able to say that I, you know that i died with you know integrity and honor I want to die thinking that I, I, I led a good life and I to me le leading a good life is the influence you had on others you know like I wouldn't want just like you know 12 or 13 people to be like yeah it sucks Clint's gone you know let's drink a beer and, and, and go to Pizza Hut you know I want people, I want you know I want the, the world to be like you know this man I barely met him, but, you know, the time that I did meet him, you know, it was it was something that I, would be memorable, and he was a good dude, and, you know, and I want to be able to say that I affected people like that, you know, like, I, you know, I want people to be, ups, you know, sad that I'm gone, you know, like, I want to show the world that not everybody is an asshole, not everybody is, is fucking just selfish fucking way of life that people live these days you know there's still good people in the world that just you know when I go to the doctor you know with my parents it's like it feels like the cancer makes my parents feel older I don't know if that makes sense if, you know it's just you know I guess it's that they're so adamant about dying before they're you know Dying before the kids die. I bet I would have been a good dad. My dad was a great dad. My mom was a great mom. I love my mom to death. Oh, he's sitting there going, you ain't gonna win, you ain't gonna win. Oh, yeah. No, dude. Sorry. They're gonna win. They're gonna win. Gonna take it. <laughs> you ain't gonna shove that ball so far up your ass, you ain't gonna. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a good kid, man.
<laughs> she just has no fucking film for me. Like, oh, uh, you didn't this morning either. It's like all you're talking about is putting things up people's asses and stuff, and it's like your son sitting here dying from it. Chill for a second. You know, it's funny, I think Jeep is, uh, Jeep's really in tune with me. He never leaves my side, like, he's always sleeping with me, like, he's always, like, right here, and he's always on the bed with me, he always gives me my space, but, you know, he'll tell when I'm about to go to sleep, he'll come up here and sleep with me. If if I get up, he's looking for me. Like, if I get up and go to the bathroom, he'll come and sit in the bathroom right next to me, and then I'll get in bed, and he'll get back in the bed. And I'm looking at him, and now he's got, like, marks on his face and things like that, and he's kind of looking like he's getting a little sick. And I'm sitting there going, wow, man, it's like... I have such a, you know, good bond with my pets, you know, with L.A. and Jeep that, you know, I could see it in their attitude and the way they are and their facial features, you know, like, always real sick, you know, real skinny, and, you know, Jeep's, you know, real tired, and he's got, like, marks on his face and things like that, it's like, you know, my health is, like, affecting their health, you know, I've had him since they were baby, you know, thanks again for watching, guys, again, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you're here and you're new, please consider subscribing. As you can see, we have, you know, tons and tons of content, tons of videos. We go back about six years. I do intend on making more content here. I'm going to be hanging out with the boys at the shop hopefully soon and filming some content with uh, Cody and Zach and those guys because uh, I really, really miss hanging out with those guys.